Huh. I don't like waspers. And I'm going to call them that because it's what I grew up calling them. And have you noticed how hard it is to say wasps? <laughs> anyway, I saw one on my window recently. And I mean, on the inside. I was sitting there at my desk, minding my own business as I ate my breakfast and drank my coffee. And there it was, crawling on the inside of my window right in front of my face. Well, not right in front, but in front up high. Now, I know waspers pollinate our flowers and crops and take care of some pests. They have their function, but not my house. And I'm not about to try to gently get a hold of a wasp and put it outside where it can do some good. A bee, maybe, but waspers really hurt when they sting. So I grabbed my shoe off my foot climbed up on a stool, and swapped the thing. It fell, but I couldn't find it, even though I, I searched all around on the floor. So I sat back down to resume my breakfast. And lo and behold, there it was again, on the same window, just moving a bit slower this time. I took off my shoe and climb, climbed back up on the stool and smacked the wasper again. This time it definitely fell to the floor and I saw it under my desk. Sadly, the little thing was still walking about, but ever so slowly. I felt sorry for it and tried once more to kill it. This time it ended up on its back, its little legs kicking about. The cat was watching all of this and her judgment fell heavy up on my shoulders. But what could I do now? I had to put the poor wasper out of its misery. So I took my shoe and ground it across the wasper back and forth until I split the little thing in two. Well, actually, I smashed it to smithereens. I had to make sure it was good and dead because it couldn't bear knowing it was suffering in pain at my hands. And this is how compassionate beings behave. If you must kill some, kill it good. Kill it all the way. Kill it dead. Don't let it writhe in anguish. Many Christians believe their God, who is loving and compassionate beyond anything we can imagine, will sit back happily as they worship Him and, and watch contentedly as trillions of human beings endure agony and torment and wretchedness that will last forever. It, and it's excruciating pain that we can't even fathom. Yet they applaud and say, Yes, Lord, yes. This is good and holy and righteous and just and worthy of all acceptation. Come quickly and start the fire and take me out of this cruel world. Do these people not kill waspers dead? Do they just injure them and let them die there in pain? Or, or let them lie there in pain until they finally die? I wouldn't do that to a cockroach, let alone a wasper. And how about a dog? If you had to put down your beloved pet, your little Fifi that you've had since you were a baby, would you tell the vet to cut off a leg and then an arm? and continue to hurt Fifi until she passed out, only to begin the process again once she regained consciousness? Or, or let's say it's not Fifi. Let's say it's Fido. And let's say Fido is a wild dog that hangs around your neighborhood. And one day he manages to get inside your yard and he digs his teeth into sweet little Fifi's neck and kills her. Would you want Fido to suffer as I described above? We wouldn't do to a bed bug anything what Christians claim their loving God plans to do to us. That's because we are decent, we are kind, we are loving, we have a heart. Let me tell you something. If you approve of hell as described by the Christians who believe in its fiery pit, uh, uh, where human beings suffer eternally, you are messed up in the head. Without meaning to, you have seared your conscience to the point that you can love a being who plans to torture your own family member. 
yours. And yes, I know you have people you love whom you believe will end up in that deep, dark pit. That's how bizarre, how insane, how perverted the doctrine of hell is. It causes people to be okay with thinking of their loved ones burning while they rejoice at their own good fortune. This ideology is a blight upon the face of the earth. It's completely shameful. It causes normally decent people to become evil monsters who plan to rejoice as their, their loved ones are tortured who plan to praise the demon who is torturing their loved ones and tell him how righteous and holy his torture is. I wish I had been brave enough to take the wasper outside. If I could have a do-over and, you know, work the way I am, I would run into the kitchen and get a quart jar with a lid and hold the jar over the wasper until it climbed inside. Then I could put on the lid, and turn the wasper loose in the backyard. But I was afraid. And fear causes people to behave in ways they wouldn't normally behave, in ways they would normally be repulsed by. It's why Christians approve of hell. They fear their God. They fear his hell. They fear that they themselves may end up there. And that fear causes them to be irrational and to believe outlandish and harmful ideas and further to approve of anything that their God approves of, whether it's child murder, slavery, incest, or barbecue pit for frying up human beings. I don't think these people can help themselves, and we can't help them until they're ready to be helped. All we can do is feel sorry for them until something, somehow in some way, shocks them out of their stupor. Rest in peace, little wasper. Sorry your life had to end because I was afraid. Thanks for watching. Bye.